What is going on guys, this is Johnny of Watchcom 10 YouTube and welcome to this video. Today I'm actually going to show you um, cascading data sheets. That's something I've been working on now for 8 hours or so. So basically the whole day. Because I actually got a day off because I had a surgery on Tuesday. Um, so now I can't really walk because it was on my foot. Um, yeah, so... Now I'm here and I can actually work on some project and I decided to create this project now. And I actually that idea popped up because I was thinking about an application which I had to make a while ago. And that application actually uses something which is easier than databases. Um, so that's actually kind of a structure like CSS because CSS actually means cascading style sheets in case you didn't know. Um, so what I'm doing with cascading data sheets is actually making data yeah I don't know making retrieving data way more simple okay um, so I'm gonna show you what this actually is so if we start this application right now and now we can specify an ID right here as you would in a database and now we can get values so that's for the first ID and we want to get the second one and now we want to get the third one so there are actually just three of these uh, in the cascading data sheet in the data sheet. Um, so what this basically is, it's a better way to retrieve data locally, but also from a URI you specify. <laughs> oh, that rhymed. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you what this basically means and why you should use this. So databases are quite complex, you have to admit that. Even if you are an experienced developer, they are quite complex. And for simple things like just retrieving some data, which you actually don't have to edit, or the user doesn't have to edit, so something like making a database for users, and no one is actually able to exit it besides people who are actually admins of that server. So that would be kind of pointless to just create one giant database and get someone to make a complex database design just so that you have like five users in there. Um, I just think that's, you know, over the top. So I created something which allows you to do just that, retrieve data. Um, you know, you cannot edit data, but you can retrieve that, and you can have one admin or more who can actually edit that data, which is stored online or which is stored on the server. Um, or you can, of course, actually edit the data if you do that locally. So doing that, doing that on the server is a little bit tricky. It's a little risky because there could be more than one person who's actually accessing that file, and then would cause a lot of problems. But actually doing all of that locally, so adding everything, adding something to the pseudo database is working just fine. Um, so yeah, I just gave you an, uh, a little presentation of this, I hope. Um, yeah, And you can actually see how fast it is, so if you want to get the values you can see that's done immediately and it actually retrieves that date as well, so there's no problem at all. Um, it's really really fast. And now, I want to kind of do a little mind blow for you. And guess what? It's online, and it requires five lines of code. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Now I got your attention, hopefully. So now, I'm going to show you how to actually set this up. It's really simple. All you need is love. No, but besides that, you what you have to do, you have to just create a text document. If you want that on a server, you can just create a text document and actually call this .txt, store this on your server, actually enter the URL in here and create this new URI, pass that through the constructor of the cascading data sheet, which I created. I actually created a library just for C Sharp at the moment, but I'm actually gonna make this available for um, Java. Android, I'm gonna talk to web developer, so probably from the web, so for web applications. And maybe, just maybe, Objective-C. Maybe. Really. That's something I haven't worked with before. So, and it's really quite tricky because, you know, whatever. Um, back to the point. So, uh, you store that on the server, you enter, or actually, yeah, you get that URL, you put that in here, pass that through the constructor, and boom. Then you just have to use the getValue method and you have to actually specify the attributes right here. Isn't that simple? Yes, it is simple. <laughs> so, okay, 
Um, I just want to show you how that's set up. So five lines of code, that's it. Five lines. That's just ridiculous. So of course it depends on how many values you have in there, but you kind of get the concept. And also, this is of course a beta, so there there are a lot of bugs probably in that or, um, still. So at the moment there's no actually syntax check or something, so if you mess something up, then you know, you have to deal with that at the moment, at the moment. But then I'm going to, of course, update this application. Oh, yeah, it's not an application, but I'm going to update the libraries, um, or the library at the moment. And then, of course, uh, I will do some exceptions, which I'm going to throw at you if you mess up something. All right. So, as I said, it depends on how many volumes you have in there, but there are quite a lot of methods you can use. So let's do sheet. dot, And now you can see everything you can do with this. Um, so you can do get all values from attribute, get attribute count, get attributes, get hash code, get object, get hash code. Yeah, <laughs> that's nothing. Okay, get object, get object count, get value, and get version. So there's also a version, so if you want to update that, um, if you want to implement a little update system, you can just do something like blah if sheet dot get version, and then it's less than the current version of the sheet, which is stored locally, if you want to store that locally then you can just update that and download that file again. <laughs> Isn't that simple? So I'm going to show you how actually how to actually create one of these um, cascading data sheets. Okay, and by the way you can use this locally and you can store this on the server, so that's really convenient. Because databases can be quite complex and you know how that is. So yeah, I actually created this a second ago. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this because that looks pretty complicated, but it's really not. It's really not. So all you have to do is you start with just doing a simple HTML tag, basically. So you just do CDS slash CDS and you have that tag. That's it. So that's basically just a little header or a little tag to tell the compi uh, compiler, you know, quotation marks, um, quote unquote, um, uh, that this is actually a cascading data sheet. So now you have to specify a version, so you just do version equals one. And that's something I've talked about before. If you use the get version method, you can just retrieve that version and you're fine. You can retrieve that version and you can update that yeah, you know, in quite a simple way. Alright, now we have the version. And now we actually have to specify something called the object. So you do object equals two. And there's actually something you have to put in. So if you want to create something like an event, then you can totally do that. But now let's say we want to create something else. Let's say we want to create a person. Okay? So you want to create a person, and you actually have you don't have to use quotation marks, but it's really recommended um, because I'm probably going to change that in the future, so it's better to get used to it right now. So object equals person, and now we actually have to specify some attributes that has, and then you're going to see what this basically means in a second. So now you just have to put these curly brackets, and then you're just going to do two quotation marks. And you're going to put in here what you want. So there's a name for that person, then maybe there's a hair color, and yeah, of course, there must not be a space in between of these. That's kind of obvious. And then there has to be something like the H. Okay, that's it. So three attributes you can add. I don't know, hundreds of attributes, it doesn't matter. And it's still pretty fast. I tried that out. I, I tested it, and it's actually faster than a database, which I think is a plus, definitely. Okay. So now all you have to do to actually create a person, or well, yeah, it's actually person, you just have to do type person, and do one curly bracket and close that per curly bracket. Now in here you just have to use the attributes. So H. Okay, that's it. And now you have to actually specify a name. Again, quotation marks are recommended, but you don't actually have to use them right now. And now let's specify a name. So let's create me. So Johnny Manson. And now you actually need to have a semicolon. So now you can basically see why this is very similar to CSS, which is of course cas cascading uh, style sheet. That's actually where the name's coming from. Um, so now we have to specify the hair color, so it's just going to be blue, because I have blue hair, of course. <laughs> now, okay, let's use black, let's be honest. Okay, I'm not being honest, but psh, don't tell anyone. Of course, and now we need the H, and you don't need quotation marks since it's an integer, but again, it's kind of recommended. 
it's not too important right now, but I think that's all right. Um, so now we have <laughs> twelve. <laughs> Great, twelve. Yeah, twenty. And now let's create something else. Oh, by the way, you could. Now let's make this beautiful. It's totally beautiful, isn't it? So now we need a person, and I'm just going to create another one for the sake of it. Um, a color and H. So name, now let's create another person at a noble gates. <laughs> I have no idea what is this white, I guess. Oh, and look what I've done. I messed that up. White. You really have to get, have to get used to that. It's really important. Now let's put the... Oh, God. As if I... Okay. Let's put 80. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to do that. Let's put 70, maybe. Oh, he's gonna kill me, but he's never gonna see that. Oh, so I'm good. All right. Um, seventy. Hopefully that's correct. Oh, I hate age. Oh, almost forgot a semicolon. Well, that would have ended well. Okay. So now let's get back into our application. And now you can see that we have a date time pick. Yeah, I should probably have to done something like a birth date, but yeah. Let's just get rid of this and let's actually use a text box in here. If I can find that text box, here we go. Now let's use that text box and let's just change some stuff in here. Uh, it's actually gonna be um age and that's gonna be I don't know right here. That's gonna be you know the other thing, whatever that was, the hair color. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. This is awful, but still it's gonna work okay so now let's get back into the form right here and now we actually have to specify a new value because we have new attributes so right here we have to oh name is actually correct and now we have to specify let's say the hair color and now we want the I don't know what text box that is but it's just gonna be text box one dot text I don't really want to rename this right now because you know it would be quite stupid sheet dot get value and let's use the age and the IT of course alright so now we're done with that and now I actually want to use that open file dialog which I've created and now I actually want to save the text file right here Oh, I actually saved that already. Now it's called cars, but <laughs> it's not going to make that much of a difference. You can call this persons, of course, but I'm just going to call this cars now. And now you actually have to get rid of the UI because that's we want to actually access that locally. So now all you have to do is OFD dot file name. All right. So now hit save. And now let's run the program. Go to get values. Go to cars. Alright guys, oh, so something I forgot to tell you, and you actually have to specify an ID as well, because that's kind of what you have to do in a database as well. Okay, so we just need to do ID up here, and then come up with an ID, to so just do ID, and now I'm going to do 1 here, and I'm going to do ID 2 here. So this is actually going to throw an error. Isn't that great? It threw an error, and therefore I have some, you know, slight syntax uh, checking, but not really that much. So you really have to be careful that you are doing everything correctly. Okay, so let's get back to the application, and let's hit start again. And now we should be able to get it to work. So do cars, open that, and now you can see we actually retrieve the values right here. So it says black, and now we want to increase that and get the values. We have Bill Gates right here, white. Isn't that great? So that's actually cascading data sheets. I hope you like that presentation. And you can download it in the description. Please remember it's still better. So if you find any bugs, then please report them on my webpage. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.